um, just kind of in figuring it out as I go. Um, I do currently work with um, an ad agency now that is only most recently in the last six months or so because as Jez probably is aware and as many people are aware, I have <clears throat> let go of a few ad agencies over the year in not so pretty of terms. Um, but these guys are pretty great and um, I think the big reason why we are successful together is because I am very hands-on. Um, I've not let go of um, ensuring that the branding is is accounted for. So, um, you know, looking at the poll at first, I couldn't understand why I couldn't <laughs> answer the poll myself, but, um, and I was vacillating. I'm like, okay, I'm advanced, but I pay someone else. Like I'm a little bit of both now. Um, so bear with me on um, some of the early setup kind of stuff. Um, some of it's been a real long time. In fact, the first screen I'm gonna show you is my lifetime um, advertising on Facebook just for perspective. Um, please, obviously, this is not information I care to share. It's actually going to be the first time I've probably shown anybody um, this whole screen, but um, part of it is because I wanted to remember exactly, for some reason, I keep jumbling dates and I couldn't remember exactly what year we started advertising on social media, um, Facebook, but now also Instagram. Um, and we actually started at the end of 2014. And so the agency uh, I, was, I work with now, I was talking to them before going into this call and I was chatting about the fact that I was, I was gonna be talking about Facebook ads. And they laughed and they said, your, old, your account is old. Like yours is one of the only ones that's only eight digits. And I said, oh, <laughs> apparently now all of the ad accounts are like 15 digits. So I was like, great, thank you. As this guy is like 25 telling me this, I'm like, thanks a lot, I'm old. Great, I haven't heard that one before. Um, so anyways, so that's a little bit about me. We sell on a variety of channels. Um, predominantly Amazon, unfortunately, and, and as Jen mentioned, it, it's mostly a hate relationship. I, I'll be honest with you, because I do so much and we have done so much with advertising, we probably drive more traffic to them and in, uh, inadvertently to our competitors, So, which are really knockoffs, but that's a whole other thing. Okay. And Raylena, which, it was on the Forbes top 100 companies, right? So can you- Fortune 500. You made Fortune 500. We did. We were, in, okay, so silly, just silly things, right? Like, I, I'm not really a big goal setter. I really should work on that. It's one of my goals to work on, actually. Um, but uh, I did set a goal of wanting to be in the actual magazine. And to be in the actual magazine, you have to be in the top 500. And it's all relative. It's only based on growth. So, of course, as you're smaller and then you grow, it's a lot easier to make that list. Um, and I submitted the application on my 40th birthday because I guess I'm superstitious and, uh, yeah, we made it in the top 500. We were number 339. So it was pretty cool, but it's all growth percentage. So it's not like, you know, we're a $50 million company or anything like that. We're super small. <laughs> yeah. And, um, hide it mounts. You make mounts for our walls to hide cords and other unsightly things from technology and you're in the process of developing mounts for sporting goods right so everyone knows we're going to be working on skis and snowboards so we're going to be talking about that soon i actually have a snowboard solution that is going to be coming offline very soon um but yes so all of the things that plug into your tv we pretty much have a mount for so you will mount your tv what do you do with the rest right so that's where we come in. And um, for us, it's definitely a unique situation. We were dealing with a product that never had been seen before, a concept that still is really hard for people to grasp. And then because we do a lot within the video game industry, and no, I'm not a gamer, um, but because we deal with that a lot, there's a ton of misconceptions about there. Oh, it's going to overheat. Oh, it can't go vertical. All of these things that we have to constantly battle. Um, so we spend a lot of time and money educating customers. And so I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that for us, there are a little bit more touch points necessary sometimes for people to make a decision. For example, do you know what size your cable box is? I bet you don't. <laughs> you probably need to go measure it to figure it out, right? So there have, there, there's a few extra touch points for um, our customers to actually convert. But one thing that for those of you, especially that are new to it, that you know, it's a harsh reality to accept is that 
you know, you really got to bank on like five, six touch points before you're going to see that conversion. And I think that that's, um, it, it, it has gotten a little bit worse, but in, in some respects, a little bit better. We can track it better. We can see exactly where they came from a little bit better than what we used to be. But because we are getting advertised to in so many forms, in so many places, it's not retaining for people. Yep. So before, before we jump into you, like sharing your, your screen, um, I want to just sort of walk through like some general big pictures, do this with ads, don't do this with ads. And then we'll get into sort of like the nitty gritty, how to actually get an ad set up. For all of you who are on the call, um, remember that we keep ourselves muted for the entire call and you can put a question in the chat and I'll facilitate the questions and, um, share them and then I'll make sure to save, you know, so it's 3.15 now, I'll make sure to save like at least um, 20 minutes in this block for you to like kind of walk through like how to, like some of the key things of setting up an ad. So um, just to kind of like to start it off, like what are some of the big things that people should be aware of or that they should be doing specifically around Facebook ads? So it's funny that you asked that because this actually just came up with a girlfriend of mine who owns a French press company who I actually referred to my, uh, my ad agency because she's not as interested in taking on as much of the responsibility herself. Um, but the big thing in the conversation that we had that I realized is that she really didn't understand the importance of retargeting. And if you are absolutely brand new to advertising, um, you need to research retargeting and understand it through and through funnels and retargeting. You'll hear it a lot as buzzwords. And there's a lot of people that are full of shit out there that'll sit there and say, Oh, I've got this great funnel and it's going to make you a ton of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally depends on what your product is um, or your service for that matter. Um, but the most important piece of it is, is that you need to recognize that there is a funnel that whole concept of you have to continually walk the customer through. So like what I was mentioning, six touch points, be comfortable with that, get, get, get ready for it. And in fact, it could even be more depending on your product, especially a high dollar value item, forget it. You're talking 10 plus. Um, but I think, can, it's I, really can I interrupt you really quickly too sure. here? So you, you said funnel. So just, you know, since most people here are sort of new to things with, with the funnel and, and you can show us this when you actually go to set up the ad, there's actually different categories of people and activities behavior that you can target. So when Relina is speaking to funnels, she's talking about there's like people who you just want to, they've never heard about you, you want brand awareness. Then you've got like people who have heard about you and they're like sort of like in the funnel now, but then you want to like move them through the funnel and get them to the point where they actually buy something. And that's where these six to seven touch points come in. These are all different Facebook ads. These are all different ads. And then when you, and then the retargeting is at the very bottom because you're, you're ready to seal, seal the deal. So there's way too much for like Raylena to get into like all these different funnels, but that's kind of what she's talking about is like how you're moving someone closer to a purchase and being able to think about those different steps and how you're creating ads for those steps and creating your audiences based on behaviors as people move through those steps is in, an important part of Facebook ads. So if I can find it, and so far I haven't, so bear with me, I'm gonna send a quick message here. Um, the ad agency helped lay out a funnel and there are, we've done it a number of times, there's a tool out there and I can't remember what it's called because I'm not the one personally that does it, but it will help lay out the funnels. But the new one that they did is actually really good and I'd love to share it with you guys. So let me just ask for that real quick. Um, Raylena, as you're asking for that, I have a couple questions come in in advance of this call. So I just want to like throw a couple out now. So, um, and actually these came from Danelle. <laughs> so, um, is there a perfect amount to spend on a Facebook ad for it to get the recognition it needs? Ooh, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of different tactics. That's a that's more than a a, a quick answer. Uh, there's a lot of different tactics to give uh, what is oftentimes called seasoning to your ad. Um, one would be social proofing, which is where you would intentionally um, target your 
retarget audience, but really your pre your previous purchasers. Sometimes it happens inadvertently. Um, but if you do that intentionally, it gives you social proof on the post where suddenly you have customers that have used your product saying, oh my gosh, it's great. It's wonderful. I love it. Da, da, da. And like as much as we share uh, content that includes review quotes and things like that, those actual organic comments from customers are so much more valuable, um, especially this day and age where everyone is skeptical. I mean, you got to bear in mind when we started advertising on Facebook in 2014, that's when most of the stuff that you saw was a scam. It, I mean, I remember buying some acai pills that I could never find. Like it took me forever to be able to cancel it. Right. It was this recurring thing. They just kept sending them and charging me. So um, a lot of people are still feeling like, Oh, that's how it is. And, um, so yeah, that's, there's not a quick answer to that, but I'll definitely delve into that a little bit more on some of the tactics to make sure that you're properly seasoning your content and your ads. Um, because if you don't, it's not going to go anywhere. All of this advertising and social media, um, has a snowball effect. So as you start building and building and building, it grows and grows and grows, right? So social media followings are exactly the same way. Um, when we first hit 10,000 followers on, well, back when likes and followers, whatever mattered on Facebook, um, after advertising, we saw it just start to catapult. Um, and it's that snowball effect, right? You see the same thing more so now on um, Instagram with the followers because Instagram still actually cares about that, sort of. Yeah. Well, and in terms of like the perfect amount to spend, like as you go in and set up your ads, you'll get a little warning if you have not dedicated enough budget and if you and you can kind of see how you change your budget, how many people you're going to hit. But I think that like what you're getting at is that this is an on, this is an ongoing spend that you're like, and you're spending oh, these different categories. And like, that's how you're going to actually start seeing the recognition is that you have to have a daily spend and you have a daily spend on these different types of ads so that people can see you in different, in different ways. Um, another quick question for you before we like keep jumping in, are there mm -hmm. magic days in the month to run ads or days when to absolutely not run them? Yesterday was a day not to run them. We, just so that everybody knows, like we it's turned day. off all of our ads. We turned as them all we, off. Yeah. As did we, and that's the first time I've ever done that since we started. Yeah. So generally speaking, no, there's not a time to turn off ads. Um, unless, you know, you don't have viable content for something that is timely, seasonal, whatever. But um, no, normally no, never. But yesterday... Yeah, everything went, yeah, we turned ours off. Um, and in terms of like, I think, obviously if you're running a specific promotion, you know, say it's like a holiday promotion or something like that, you are going to spend more than maybe other times of the year if you're just having like a general flow. But you also need to know that in terms of your spend, you can't just jump into Facebook ads, dump a shit ton of money in and think you're gonna see the sales. It's an everyday type of thing and you actually wanna build toward it and building toward it is setting up these audiences, getting a pixel fired, um, you know, and, and, and retargeting people. And so then when you get to your larger campaigns, when you put money behind that, you can feel a little bit more confident that you're actually going to be successful. Um, before you start sharing, I just want to also anybody in the audience, if you have questions, pop them into chat. Um, and, um, before you start sharing your screen, is there anything else just generally that you want to share about this, Raylena? I, Things to do or not to do? I think the most important factor with marketing, advertising and marketing, which is very similar to really just being an entrepreneur, right? Is that you have to be willing to change, adapt, test, retest, change it some more. Um, nothing is ever set in stone, especially with social media. Um, maybe print ads, you know, there's, there's probably a lot more reliability in terms of what you can expect, what kind of the rules are, um, as well as even commercials. But social media is an entirely different beast. Having done this for long enough, I've seen the trends come and go. And um, 
it's always something new and different. And for example, with like things like Snapchat, I'm like, hell no, never. Right. Right. But then now, now TikTok, I'm staring in the face going, shit, do I really have to do this? <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't even, t- I don't want, I don't even talk about TikTok. Um, <laughs> so Jeff, Jeff has a question here. Um, and this, like, as, as you share your screen, so in the, in the sort of like final step where you're setting up your campaign, you can choose. And Jeff wants to know, do you have recommendations on performance of video ads versus single image ads versus multiple image ads? So I'm, I'm dying for my, like, I'm like, what is she doing? I need to see this funnel so I can send it to you because it does break out some of that. Um, I think that what's really important in determining what uh, type of content you're going to use is what's your, what's your purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Where in the funnel are you hitting this person? Um, videos are often very, very successful with very top of funnel, right? Your initial introduction to them. The nice thing about videos is that you can actually retarget those based on how much of the video they have seen, but be forewarned that when you retarget on engagement, all engagement, likes, comments, that includes your video views. So then you no longer have control of how much of the video view uh, or how much of the video they've seen. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. I will tell you with all of these things, there is no one answer. Um, It depends definitively on what kind of product you're working with. If you are working with a product like mine that requires a little bit more education, you have to take that into account in your content. Um, But I would say the biggest deciding factor with, video versus single or multiple images oftentimes is going to be the place in the funnel. Um, And so I do have, yay, that funnel for you. So that's going to actually be the one I'll share with you guys first. Uh, Let's see. And as everybody has questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll, I'll ask, but yeah, go ahead, share. share I, I, I had the chat open and now it disappeared on me because Zoom likes to always change my windows. So (laughs) I got you. Um, Don't worry. All right, so you guys can see this funnel, right? Uh, So the way that it's breaking out, again, where in the funnel you're targeting is hugely important. So just to explain what you're looking at, if you start on the left side, cold, top of funnel, we're looking at objectives, okay? So landing page view is the LPV, we've got video views and page posts. I, unlike many advertisers, heavily leverage page posts versus straight ad creation. In fact, it only has been since working with this agency that we've gone back in the last several years, it was really the first time, where we went back and started playing with actual true ads versus essentially what you would consider a boost post. Um, I think both have their purpose. Um, I think that if you have, say, one major product versus a full product line, Um, going the ad route is great and just, you know, getting it out there is fine. Um, They've made some changes uh, as to, (sighs) rewind, remember you asked about seasoning, okay? One of the tricks with seasoning, the reason I used page post often was because it enabled me to season an ad a whole, with a whole bunch of different audiences at one time. So if you go and you create it like based as an ad ad, at least this is how it used to be, it's not quite the same anymore, you would be able to have the one ad set would push to one ad and it would have that set of likes and comments. But the next time you duped it, did a different audience, now it has its own set of likes and comments. And I never liked that because I wanted it all to live together because the higher the popularity of of the ad, the better the performance. The more comments, the better it or the algorithm sees it as being engaging and it's gonna push it out more. So that was a lot of the reason behind why I focused predominantly on page posts because it did um, enable me to have it live on my actual page, which meant that if people came to the page, it looked a lot more popular. They didn't know I paid for it, number one. Number two, it all kept everything in that one place. So um, there is some differences with that now because you can pull the code from 
add posts and be able to do that. Um, but before you really couldn't. And again, there is still that benefit of having it live on the page. If someone decides to do a little bit more research and they're like, wow, she has all these followers, but there's only five likes on a post. Well, that doesn't look very good, right? So uh, it kind of helps that problem. Relina, let me, uh, Raquel has a question here. What does it mean to season an ad? Is that like season? Let me see if I can try to explain it as best as possible. When you first put an ad out there, it's got no likes and no comments. It's, it's, it's bland. It has nothing to it, right? So seasoning it is really being able to give it some traction, making sure that it has comments, it has likes. Um, again, going back to that snowball effect and wanting to be able to put it all into one place, and which is why we, why we used page posts for so long. Um, getting that social proof on the post where actual customers say, hey, this is a great product. Um, you know, it will take time for that to start happening. And until that happens, you will not see tremendous success for an, with an ad. So, you know, back to Danelle's question about how much you need to spend, uh, the amount of time and money that it might take to season an ad totally varies. I can tell you that for me, um, when we do a new post and I want to make sure that it gets seasoned a little faster because I'm confident about the content, I'll easily put $50 a day behind it. But I've also got, you know, we're spending roughly $1,000 a day. So I have budget to work with. Um, not everybody is in that position. And so that's where you have to make a decision. Do I want to, how much do I want to spend over time on this this ad and do I want to go ahead and maybe push it into a shorter time frame? I have come to the conclusion that in order to season ads, I prefer to spend more in the first three days and then allow the budget to taper down after that once it has had some of that seasoning. But it does need that love at the beginning, right? It's just like plants or whatever, you know, they need a little extra love in the beginning. Same kind of thing with an ad. Um, it's not going to have that immediate turnaround. So personally, my, my recommendation would be spend a little more up front, get it seasoned, get it some traction, make sure it's got some likes, make sure it's got some comments, and then let it go. If you can't seem to get the stuff to season in the beginning, well, then it's probably not going to be a successful ad. So you've failed quickly, right? They say, fail fast, fail fast. That's kind of what this kind of concept would be. Um, you, can, you can, one thing that people should know is that you can actually go in and make a bunch of different ads, put the same amount behind them and see which ones start performing better. And then you turn the ones off that aren't performing and you bump up the ones that are. So like there is, there is this experimentation in this, like you have to sort of see what resonates or not. And you know, what we can see with your, with your funnel here is that you have two strategies. One is your cold top of funnel, which is like, you just want people to know about you and then how you're moving them to be a warm audience and engaged audience, hot and the purchase. And those are all different ads. And this, I just want to say for everybody on the call, since most of you said you're at the beginning of your Facebook journey, this is pretty high level and not beginner strategy. So maybe life goal this shit right now. Um, to get there, but it's also a really good idea for you to like map out what you think your customer journey would be with your Facebook ads. Um, Relina, do you want to move into actually showing sure. Facebook ads? And I think that where it would be helpful. Um, so everybody, let's just get to the point where you're actually building an ad. Let's not spend time with like setting up ad work, hey, like you your ad account. I want you to build an ad. Like, right. remember what you did for me that one time? <laughs> no, that was so long ago. That was a long time ago. I know, but I want you to do that. So everyone, like, um, you need to have a Facebook ad account, and you need to have a pixel. And Does Facebook everybody have a Facebook ad account? Huh? Does everybody have a, a Facebook ad account? I don't know if everyone does, but they will after this call. So everyone needs a Facebook ad account. You need to have a pixel. The pixel needs to be installed on your website. You can Google how to do all those things. And actually none of that is hard. 
Um, but those oh, are all things you need to do in advance. So go ahead. Yeah. So with that kind of stuff, you just need to follow directions. Um, usually like I'm, um, our whole website's on Shopify. Um, and if you're not sure, you know, if you are in the market for where to host your website, I definitely recommend it for e-commerce. Yeah. Um, but you might want to go direct to whoever your website is with for instructions in addition to what you can find from Facebook, just because it's, it, they can't write those instructions for every every site. Okay, so this is lifetime value of what we've done. And I will tell you that here's a sad reality. Until the last three to six months, my direct return on ad spend never was above one. Never. What does that mean? That means that technically I was losing money on ads, right? If you talk about direct conversion. So this is all just kind of the realities that you guys need to accept, especially if you sell on other platforms. Like, look, our lifetime value. That sucks. Yeah. For spending a million. Yeah. And just yeah. so that everyone knows, this account overview, when you create your account and you start running ads, you will see all of this. So this is just like, this is your dashboard. It gives you all of the data on how your ads are performing and you can see that it like run you can select the dates um you can look at amount spent in, in impressions um stefania i'll probably say because maybe you're on weebly but that's just um we're gonna spend a lot of time waiting i might have to um excuse myself for a moment and make sure to put an end to any um online video gameplay that cur currently is happening downstairs okay because it's not loading um we'll while see. you we're, do that so we're up now we're we're up right now so we'll see okay yeah if you want to jump into like actually how to start making an ad i think that would be for good. sure um in terms sure. of like loading a facebook pixel you can make as many pixels as you want um, and you make one in Facebook and then you want to make sure that the one that's in Facebook that you newly made is the one that's on your website and Facebook will tell you if it's working or not but you can go in and make new ones if it's not working it's probably an issue with your platform and so then you need to troubleshoot with your specific platform Tessa a pixel think of the pixel as big brother the pixel is Mark Zuckerberg who I will also put on the records a fucking asshole. And so it's a shame that we have to actually put our money into somebody who cannot manage how to restrict a racist president's existence. I digress. Um, but a pixel's like big brother, right? So it's like basically Facebook creates it for you. You put it on your website and now it's tracking any human who comes to your website. And why that's important is that this is how you build your audiences. So you'll see from Raylena in just a minute um, that you can like build an audience of, I want, I want to create an ad for anybody who's been on my website in 30 days. You know that because of the pixel, it's taking people's data. So as a business owner, you don't know who those people are and you don't have access to it, but you're creating these ads based on people's activity on your website and you can own or on your social media platforms. And the only way that you can do that is by having a pixel installed. So th that's, that's like number one must have. Really, yep. go ahead. That actually is. So remember I talked about the importance of retargeting. You cannot retarget without your pixel properly installed. So it's one of those things that you definitely need to check into. Uh, there is a way to check it through Google Chrome. Um, I can't remember exactly what the, um, they don't call them apps extension is, but you'll want to go and check that and that'll help you troubleshoot. I'll tell you, it's a pain. Um, and you know, we've had it break a number of times over the years and have to go in and fix it and change it. Um, I remember a few years back, Shopify did a major, major upgrade and it totally broke the pixel. So, um, that part's really important. Okay. So in here first, you've got ads, campaigns, ads, ad sets, and campaigns. And from a structural hierarchy, you, it's, it's a little bit difficult to sometimes understand. I wish I would have been prepared with a way to like draw things out for you guys and explain it because that's a little bit easier. 
but basically campaign is your super upper level. That's what determines what your objective is. Your objective is that video views, landing page views, things like that. That's where you decide what you're targeting. Not what you're, not who, but what kind of action you're targeting. Um, the ad set really predominantly is going to be the place that you're controlling things like your audience. So um, demographics, um, location, um, that's where you can control the audience retargeting piece of it. You can um, target lookalike audiences and things like that. And then your ads is just really your content. And I mean, you could, you could get lost in just the options within the ads, um, creating different pretty pieces of content. Um, so to start with, you know, we really try to lump things as much as we can. So as you can see, I've got some that are page posts here, but then like here is an abandoned. Abandons do incredibly well. If I were to easily just pull out and extract for you guys, the data points on retargets versus lead ads. So top of funnel versus we they've been exposed to us in some way, shape or form. You'll see, you can spend less in the retargets and you're gonna make, that's where you're gonna make all your money. So right now, I think that we have it uh, as 70% spend on lead ads, 30% on retarget ads, but all of the conversions for the most part come from those retarget ads. So you have to kind of look at budgets and things like that accordingly. We use most of the automatic settings. Again, there's a lot of things that you can get lost into with Facebook ads, and a lot of it, I think, is fluff. It's ways that Facebook makes it confusing, so you spend more money. Um, all right, so at the campaign level, that's where you're gonna, as I mentioned, start your, um, start, start, start things off with your objectives. So here's what your objectives look like. So Jen mentioned the brand awareness and things like that. And again, you know, you are gonna want to make some changes to objective based on where you are in the funnel. Going back to that, um, that funnel that. I'm, we're working with, you know, that top of funnel. We got landing page views, video views, page posts. Um, the page posts, we usually actually are targeting um, an objective of like engagement. Um, sometimes they're still landing page views. Sometimes they're, well, not very often, but sometimes they're even reach if they're a retarget. Um, I haven't really used the brand awareness terribly much. Um, so I can't speak to that. The main ones that we use would be um, traffic. And really we use conversions for landing page even more so than that and catalog sales. Um, I don't know if this is still the way that it is, but in the past, the way that it worked is that you have this huge bucket of whatever audience you're targeting. Let's say I'm targeting um, Xbox gamers, which I hate to target because they're shitheads, but um, I'm targeting Xbox gamers, right? And there's this whole bucket of them. Well, they're, they're segmented by what their most likely action is. So this is where objective comes into play. So at the top are, it's probably like this for Xbox. There's that many of them that are more likely to be engagers. They're likely to comment and like, or not like a post. Um, but the amount of them that are willing to purchase or likely to purchase are much, much smaller. So when it comes to ad cost, you're going to see a very different type of ad cost depending upon what your objective is. Uh, if you're it is still that way. Yeah, if, right, and then it cuts out the other people, right? Like, so when you're doing that, that's something to bear in mind is that for a full-fledged approach, if you're like me, where you're like, well, I don't really want to just rely on Facebook to decide who is likely to purchase and whether or not they should see my product, because I think people that are not likely to purchase on Facebook still might buy my product, right? Um, that's where you're going to go after other things. You're going to go after engagers. You're going to go after um, just views, perhaps. Um, so bear that in mind that if you really want to saturate a specific um, audience, you need to have different objectives in there. All right, which objective do we want to start with? Why don't you run us through traffic? I feel like traffic is like a really good sort of like middle of funnel. Um, it is, but you know what? I We're not actually using traffic as much, so we're actually using it under, oh, I totally went out. Um, we're using it out of the um, conversions. Okay. Landing page. So let me just show you that. 
So one thing that you'll notice in mine, if I can spend more time showing you, is that I am really anal retentive about how we name everything um, so that I can, it's like a breadcrumb. So the campaign name has what the objective is so I can look at it at a glance and see exactly what I'm looking at. The ad set has information about the audience targeting. So once again, I can see what I'm looking at, but then the end of it has the campaign name. So if I'm just looking at the ad set, I know exactly where the whole thing lives. Then when I get to the ad, the ad has the information about what that content is, but then it also has the ad set and the campaign tacked at the end. So once again, I know exactly what I'm looking at. Um, and I highly suggest creating some sort of a naming mechanism like that because I've looked at other people's ad accounts and, and it's just the, I think it pre-fills for you like whatever the copy is from the ad and like, I don't know how you even like see what's going on, so. So like in, uh, in the last screen, just so that ev everyone knows where it said conversion, that's what Relina is talking about. Like she would rename that. And if, can you scroll back up to the top of your page here to the very top? Yes, hold on, maybe it's super slow, sorry guys. Do you see where it says ad set name US 18 plus? This is where you're actually gonna type in who are the people that you're targeting. And this is how you can go back into your ad and remember what you've done. So for example, if you're going to target women who are the ages of 18 to 44 in the United States who've been on my website in the past 30 days, you name that in your ad set name. You actually like figure out a way to abbreviate that because then you can remember this is, this is who I'm talking to. Sorry, I'm gonna go in and look at how they did it because it's been a while since I've done any of this. Um, I just tell everybody what to do <laughs> at this point. So here's one, instead of just building it, I'm gonna go in and show you from an editing okay. stance. I might've misquoted on the, it is traffic, I apologize. Uh, but there was another section where we change it to the landing page and I'm trying to, I don't remember where it's at. So the reason why I brought up traffic just so that everybody knows is that I find that you don't have to spend as much on traffic to see results. Whereas when you go into conversions, you're spending more to actually get a con conversion. So this is an objective issue. I'm not saying that you would never yeah. use a conversion. You just need to know where you're going to spend a little bit more of what you're trying to do. And I find that the objective of being traffic is a great starting point for moving people around is why I recommended that. But yeah, it is. go ahead it's, and it's show it. We only, really don't, we only have 13 minutes left. Oh, so wow. go okay. ahead and yeah, get us into one um, and show us how to set it up. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through something that I'm more familiar with. How about that? Um, so this is a purchase campaign, okay? So conversion purchase is what the objective is. So when we were in the other one, you have the opportunity to choose conversion and you can, like there's web app installs and shit like that. Like, no, I don't know who uses that. I mean, I guess people do, but I never see those ads. Anywho. Um, that's really all you're controlling at the campaign level. This, the ad set level is where it starts to really get the most interesting, I think. Oh gosh, we have too many. Can we actually, Relina, can I actually ask you to go back yeah. and create one from scratch? Because I see what you're doing here, but for someone who's never done it, that view doesn't show you how to actually do it. So will you okay. just create like super yep. basic from scratch? This okay. is how, yeah. Traffic. Thank you. This thing is just moving hella slow, sorry. Okay, so this is where I was mentioning the apps and things like that, website, right? And then, all right. So in here, you have the option of custom audiences. You can use saved audiences. So once you create one and save it, you can, it, it's in there. Um, be careful because I have a whole lot in there and it can get very cumbersome. Um, but it is kind of a nice way to store some of them. You can also then um, in here, create your lookalike audiences. So if you upload a custom audience being like your customer list, then you can create a lookalike 
lookalike audience based on that customer list, which is super helpful. And I actually um, overlay a lot of things with a lookalike audience because it just helps Facebook narrow it down to the people that are most likely to Usually it's a, a purchase conversion, but even still, even within a traffic, you overlay it with your purchasers, you're probably going to see better results. And you can, can you show people how to make a custom audience of someone who's visited your website in say so 30 days? You, do so a just look -alike. Make you can do a lookalike, you select your source. Um, so I can choose my, my pixel and then I can select those that have purchased. There's all kinds of different options these days, but you can also adjust like how broad or how tight the targeting is. Lately, I've been doing the 6% because it gives me a larger audience, but it still is a tight enough targeting that I'm not just going all over the place, right? So um, for us, that gives us a lookalike of 14.2 million people before adding any sort of an interest overlay. So, oh, I have to duplicate, so it won't let me. But anyways, that's how you do how you do that part. Okay, so then um, you want to get down in here to your location. Um, think about you know who your target audience is. One thing with the audience targeting that I think is really really important is to spend some time creating the avatars, knowing who you're actually trying to reach, who is your customer. So in the past, we actually went through the exercises of like naming them and age and all that. So like I had, I had a Martha because that was my mid forties. Like, oh, I probably love Martha Stewart. I'm going to make sure everything is practically perfect in the house and I want everything tidy and organized. And so how are we going to target her? She probably likes HGTV. She probably likes um, Target, you know, get, get a feel for what the person a person that you're targeting looks like and then go after them. Um, and so that's where in here, like we seldom ever go down as low as 18 because while they want our mounts, then they, they don't have the money for them a lot of the time. All right, so you can make the adjustments to there. This is where your, your interest targeting comes in. And I mean, you can, it's gonna obviously automatically populate a lot of gaming stuff for us, but it's nice because if I filled in target, I can choose target corporation as an interest. That's probably the best bet out of these. And it's a 53 million plus audience. And then I can hit suggestions and it's gonna give me suggestions based on what I just put in. And as you keep adding to it, it'll keep refining it to other things that it thinks are a good idea to include. Um, can I just, so I just want to say one thing here, like we've talked a lot in this, in this group pre previously, like how much you need to know your customer. That's, it comes in right here. Oh, yeah. If you don't know who your customer is, you're going to be lost in this particular section because this is where Facebook is asking you, who are you trying to talk to? And so the more you know who you're talking to, the better results you're going to have. And you can see here on the right hand side, like Facebook tells you, how broad is your audience? What's your daily reach? What are your landing page views? And so this is like, you're going to spend a lot of time in the beginning playing around with this and coming up with different audiences because these are, and this is all like, who are these people? You have to know who the people are that you're talking to. So one thing is, is that I, to me and the way that my mind works with this, I feel like the process to build an ad is kind of backwards. So I, even though we're starting at the campaign level, I think it's important to, to note that you should know exactly what content you're working with first, right? That's what you should work with. So for me, I'm targeting everybody with a damn TV. Good luck breaking that down, right? So in order to break that down, I have to base it on what's the content in the image? What is this saying? To, who's this speaking to? Is it a beautifully decorated setup with a hidden cable box that it's like you can barely see it? Oh, I'm totally talking to the lady that likes HGTV and cares about home decor. Or is it a badass like LED backlit, you know, game console and controller shown off setup with all kinds of gaming gear? Well, obviously I'm talking to a gamer. So, you know, knowing who you're talking to with, with the content is important as well. It's not just your general audience. It's breaking it down based on who that piece of, of content's talking to. Okay. 
So just for kind of broad strokes here, um, on the audience side, for me, the, I would never be going after this large of an audience, right? So um, there's a lot of ways to narrow that down. So first what I do is I try to, in this section, build it up as big as I can. So I might go, okay, yeah, we want Walmart, we want Costco, we want Sam's, we want eBay, whatever, right? All the shopping, sure. Then I'm gonna narrow that down and go, but, 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 I don't want all of them. They also have to want like HGTV and I, this is where my previous experience as a recruiter does come into play. Um, I kind of mentally group the things, right? And this is really similar to how I used to search for people. Um, so I've got my really broad at the top, then I break it down with that interest overlay. So like, let's say I would probably add like DIY network and you know other things that might be similar to HGTV. And then I might even narrow it even a little further because 27 million to me is a little bit too much. And so I might say, okay, I want um, parents. And I only want the ones with kids that are walking around and pulling on cords, let's say. Let's say that's my content piece and my, my focal point, right? And even new parents, because they're probably gonna be wanting to prepare for that. Well, now I'm a little smaller than I'd like. So I might go back up into here or in here and add to that. Usually I'm targeting being somewhere in the neighborhood of, of two to 10 million, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, because I'm going to let the algorithm then do its job and out of that big bucket, pick the ones that are most likely to do what I want them to do, which is generally purchase or visit the website and we're getting them into the funnel. All right. So then the connections, I usually don't mess with that. Um, one thing though, that is unique. I think that I do that other people do not do is that. I also go in here and I exclude some custom audiences and these are audiences I've already created. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to exclude my web visitors from the last 180 days. Where is it? That Where this place. becomes really handy. The reason why you would exclude people is so that you're not target, you're not hitting them over and over and over again. So who you include and who you exclude is part of a strategy of who am I talking to? So for example, one of the groups you can exclude is people who've purchased in the last 30 days. If I'm running an ad with a sale, I might want to exclude those people because they might have bought my product full price 30 days ago. So I'm not going to target them with an advertisement, right? And this is where creating all of your audiences is so important. So we have three minutes left, Raylena, so I'm going to let you keep, we're going to probably go a little over, but I'm going to let you keep running through so that people can get you, we can get all the way through the end. So you do have the choice of where to, you can go with automatic placements. Um, I haven't seen a lot of success with every single placement, honestly, but it does kind of break it out. You can monitor. Um, I personally like to generally separate Facebook and Instagram. Um, so a lot of the stuff falls into Facebook, but then I keep Instagram fully separate because again, when I'm using a page post, I'm going to use that Instagram post so that it goes to my page. And now that page post on Instagram is getting all of those likes. So that's kind of a big reason why I do that. Um, so this is optimized for landing page views. I usually don't mess with like this cost control and all that kind of the bidding and shit like that. It's just, it, again, it's just extra confusion stuff. I don't even know any ad agencies that mess with it very often because it's just a waste of time. Um, budget, you can have a daily or a lifetime. Um, sometimes if it's something timely, I will do a lifetime budget and, and decide exactly what that scheduling is. So to the question earlier about is there days that you should or should not, maybe there's a piece of content where you were like, hey, you know, Sunday morning vibe. And you're like, oh, this is a great post and it does really well every Sunday. I want it to only run on Sundays, obviously, right? Well, guess what? You can control that right here. And you can say, okay, look, I want it to be uh, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Sunday. That sounds pretty good to me. And then there you go. You can set that in there. All right. So on to the actual ad. And this is where, again, you can get lost and you can create all kinds of cool, crazy stuff. And I don't know if all of it works. So what I have found is the stuff that looks like an ad does not work for the gaming audience for me. 
it simply doesn't work. If it has what they call uh, like any of these, whoops, too far, the carousel type ads. So not carousel, uh, these, the collections where it shows you the products below gaming, it really doesn't work unless they've already been to my website and they are familiar with us, right? But as a cold ad, forget it, doesn't work. It screams ad and they run the other way. Um, but interestingly, engagement, for example, doesn't really work well with, I don't know, 40 something women because we apparently don't like anything. Um, we might tag our husband and we might share it or we might save it, but sure as shit, we're not gonna hit that damn like button. I don't know why. So, you know, that kind of stuff, I think, you know, to the question of objective and content, what to choose, it goes back to who are you targeting, what's your purpose, and um, testing it. Because I only know what works for me. I can't tell you what's going to work for you. You have to test it. And that's something that should always be part of your budget as well, is a little bit of money to test the different things. So, this is where you can go and create all kinds of different crazy stuff. You can practically create a little mini website if you wanted, or you can do what I also like to do and which I think is a good place to start oftentimes is use an existing post. And the other thing and with creating this too is like you can't create a video ad if you don't have a good video. You don't want to have like your, you don't want to have like a single image ad if it's not a really strong single image. And, and one thing that you can do is you can run through your own Instagram feed or you can run through the feeds of other businesses and see what is performing well in terms of engagement and then try to create a similar as aesthetic. Absolutely. So we try a whole lot of different stuff. So here's one. Oh, this one's an ugly setup, but whatever. I mean, ugly to me. Some people, a lot of people like it. Um, but yeah, if you are going to take the time to go about running Facebook ads, you need to invest the vast majority of your time first in creating good content. Mm -hmm. There's no way around that. And for us, that was a huge challenge. And I, I, I think different businesses, there's advantages and disadvantages. Ours, you know, in the very beginning, how do you market and advertise for something that you're generally not supposed to see? So we, you can see it with the gaming stuff, which is the low hanging fruit, the easy to advertise stuff for us. Um, but when we're talking about a hidden cable box behind a beautiful, you know, in, in a beautiful living room that you're not supposed to see or notice, well, how the hell do you market that, right? Um, and I think that, you know, it, 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 it takes time to figure out what is going to work. Um, for us, we didn't have that kind of content. And so what we ended up doing is creating um, a social program, essentially, and now everybody's doing it. At UGC, you'll hear about plenty. Okay, like I, it, it, it wasn't an acronym when we started doing this, but I got frustrated because I couldn't, I didn't have any content to work with. I had nothing to work with. So I was learning about ads and it was like I had these, these set of pictures that we had taken in the same white wall space in my office and it all looked the same. How do I get more stuff that's gonna appeal to different audiences? And so I went about the user generated content approach of creating a contest. And we have a monthly contest called After Hide It and everybody submits in their photos all month long. And then we actually have it as a social vote where they have to try to get their peeps to like their stuff more and whoever has the most likes wins and they basically get their entire order refunded. And that has proven that's something that we've done for about, I think we're pushing three years now and we have a plethora of content now to work with. And so I, I would just suggest and offer that as an option. If uh, you're struggling with the content, look to your customers, find a way to um, <laughs> bribe them for pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So keep, keep running us through this. So you're choosing an existing post. You've just found a post. Scroll us through this because we're going to have to wrap up here in a second. Yeah. I mean, there's not much after this really. Yeah. I mean, because that already has all of the copy and content and everything in it. So it's literally just confirm. So if I wanted to, um, and I think this one already has a button in it. So it's, if we were going to create, I mean, you have a ton of options. So uh, let's just say, sorry, it's really glitchy on me here. Um, you could choose a single image, probably the easiest and simplest to work with. Um, 
throw in whatever you've got. You've got primary text here. So I guess let me, let me add something so that we start filling so in. As, as you do that, I just, um, I'll answer Stefani's question. So the types of things that you have to educate people on and how do you approach it in an ad, that's going to be different for every single business. And if you think about business from a standpoint of like, whatever it is that we're creating should be solving a problem. Um, so I would, you know, part of it is like, you might want to be educating people on, hi, welcome to us. This is what we do. Um, then you might be educating people on as you move them through the funnel. You already know who we are, but did you know we make this thing? Here we, we make this thing. And then you might educate people on the, the performance or the value or the tech or, you know, what it is. And you're trying to, to move them through that. So there's multiple ads and you'd be talking about multiple different things because people are all going to be in a different stage of learning about your company, your business, and what it is that, that you offer. But if you always put yourself on the side of the customer of like, what is it that the person might be asking? That's how I would approach it. And it's different for every, because every business is selling a different product or a different service. And so it's, it's different. So obviously I'm just kind of trying to fill in here for you guys, what some of these sections are so you can hopefully see where they end up living. Um, my advice is always keep it short and sweet. Really, now you're not going to show me. You don't like my format. Okay, fine. Yeah, it doesn't like your, just, yeah. Do you like that better? It looks yep. like a valid URL. <laughs> All right. Um, so you can kind of see where things fit in. Um, my suggestion is, you know, remember I mentioned short attention spans earlier and that people need to see things five to 10 times before they're going to convert. Bear in mind, they also don't read like at all, at all. So um, you want to keep all of this as short and sweet as possible. Um, if you think that you can fit a blog post into a social media post, you're wrong. Um, that's where you would hit that button right there and say, read more and you do a teaser, right? You do some clickbait. Um, I often only use the shop now button, but you do have call to actions right there. Um, and then I haven't played with the branded content, so I can't speak to that yet, although I need to. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't want to hit confirm because this is not a good ad for us. No. <laughs> but that's right it. And everyone can see, can you scroll down a little bit more? Keep sure. going keep going and stop. Do you see how the pixel is blue and it that like the button is blue and then it's green. And so you know that your pixel is firing and then you just hit that green confirm button. And that is one, that is one ad. Um, and it does look different in the different locations. So, yeah. you know, desktop looks a little bit different. So we're very careful about writing short copy. Um, but then we have longer stuff that carries below it. If you want some examples, go look at all of mine. We actually have uh, four different pages because once we introduced sports, we realized, you know what, we can't keep putting everything all in one place. Um, and so we have our main Hide It Mounts account. Then we have tech, uh, gaming, and sports. So that stuff is kind of a little bit separated. And you can take a peek at that um, to see kind of the formatting that we're using. Seems to be working. I change it often. Yeah. Um, I just want to say for everyone, like I just, Raylena and I recognize that this can be pretty overwhelming and there's a lot here. Really the best thing to do is just go in and try it. You just got to go in, play around. There's like tons of like other tutorials and videos, but like what has helped me the most is Raylena did what she just did for you. She did for me in person. And then I think we spent maybe an hour doing it. And then I just like played with it for weeks, like trying to figure it out. Um, and so I think like, as with everything there, this isn't, you can't, the only way to like really cut corners on it is to have a budget to hire an agency to do this for you. If that's not the position that you're in, then you really just need to take the time to learn it. And as Amber and, um, Allie said two weeks ago, as a new brand, like you're the person who's like best able to kind of speak to what it is that you're doing. So you're going to find that you probably do want to be pretty hands-on in the beginning. Cause you can see that like you're creating the con all the content, like all the messaging is, is there. So I would just really encourage people to like Redlina said, like, no, get that final ad, the asset, the image, the video, get that set, know what it is you want to say, know what it, who it is you want to talk to. And then that's your, 
that's your ad and you just kind of do it the other way. Um, Raylena, I'm going to give you one minute more. If there's anything extra you want to add um, to what I just said or anything else, and then we're going to you know, to just to Jeff's point, um, it is worth your time to at least learn enough to speak intelligently with an agency, um, because otherwise, I, I've I've helped friends who really did not want to be hands on at all in their marketing, and um, you know, they really struggled with getting what they needed out of an agency. I have struggled with getting what I need out of an agency. And um, so, you know, expecting that it's gonna be some magic pill to fix it for you, it's not. Um, and even still, even prior to that, you've got to know what your brand voice is, what kind of brand imagery, like you have to have that dialed in. It can't be still in test mode of like, oh, do I think I like this color or that color? Do we like this font or do we like that font? Are we gonna, how are we gonna put this out? Now, don't get me wrong, there will be tweaks. However, you have to have that baseline set and established before you start bringing somebody else in. Otherwise, they'll change it. I had an agency take an I, you aren't seeing my logo right now, but essentially it's a, a square with hide in the middle and it at the end and it's like a cord. He took the it and stuck it inside. And I'm like, you don't change my logo. What are you doing? So be careful. Be yeah. careful. Make sure you have your stuff identified. It is always better for you to know more than everybody else at this stage until you reach a point where Everybody else is doing it for you. Yeah. Um, Raylena, I want to thank you a lot for being here and for jumping in last minute to make sure that we had, we were able to do this. I want to thank all of you for being here today. And I just want to reiterate, um, I, I'll send out the link for the next week and the payment for this. And I really hope that we can get a lot of people on next week's call and funnel a lot of money in places that it needs to go and do a lot of learning together that is desperately needed um, in this country. So thank you to all of you. Raylena, thank you. I'll follow up with Raylena's um, information, her website, all of that in the next email so you can easily find her. Um, and then you can also just get in touch with me because if you need her, we're, friend, we're good. I'll, pa I'll pass you on to her. Um, yes. All right, everyone. So have a good rest of your day and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks for Lena.